are two sisters who believe that the purpose of life is to enjoy, create, and have fun. We believe that as humans, we can have anything we want, and things are always working out for us. Experience has taught us that the path to getting everything we want begins with ease. If you believe in miracles and happily ever after, or even if you just want to, then this is the podcast for you. Hi there, I'm your host, Kayla Rain. I'm your co-host, Adria Shea. And welcome back to Attract It With Ease. How are you, Adria? I'm great. Really good. Thank you. How about you? Wonderful. I know you just got back from a trip today. How was it? It was great. It was wonderful. I flew out to see my daughter in Denver and stayed with her for a few days. And it was just really, really nice to be with her. How fun. I think it's so fun to get back to traveling. I know that there's still a lot of restrictions with the pandemic and so forth, but that's awesome that you got to go visit her and see her. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's jump into our gratitude so we can get going on this week's episode. What are you grateful for today and why? Hey, well, the first thing I'm grateful for is hugs. I got to hug my daughter and I was just thinking how good a hug feels, you know, just to like wrap your arms around somebody or vice versa, be squeezed by somebody. It's an amazing feeling. And I've heard that hugs raise endorphins. So that explains why it's so fun. I remember mom saying that people need to be hugged every day. And then I thought to myself before, what about people who never are hugged? That's really sad. I do I've think we, about that. we need that physical connection. That's a good one. What else are you grateful for? I am grateful for flowers, especially colorful or unique flowers. And they just make me smile every time I see flowers. What's your favorite flower? Oh my gosh, I don't think I could pick one, but I do love exotic flowers like lilies and orchids. I love every flower though. Love it. What else? The smell of new babies. I think that's the best smell in the world. You know, I was listening to last week's episode and you were talking about working at the hospital, but you also said you had some friends in the NICU or in not NICU. What did you say? You you said something about how you had your friends in some unit at the hospital. And I interpreted that and I thought some of our listeners are going to think her friends are in the hospital. What you meant was that your friends work in the hospital, right? Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm glad to know that you don't have a lot of friends in the hospital right now, because that totally could have been taken that way, especially go, what, everything that's going on in the world. That's true. That's true. I do know. I think I just know one person, actually, that's a patient in the hospital right now. <laughs> but working in the NICU, I get. I bet you get to smell new babies all the time. Right. Yeah. And I mean, even long before that, it has been my favorite smell for a very long time. There's nothing like a fresh baby. Mm, I think I'm overdue for that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, my three things. Number one, I was thinking about how grateful I am for starry nights. Um, Dan, my fiance, is a professional photographer. He loves to shoot the Milky Way and you only can see the Milky Way um, certain seasons of the year. But I love evenings when you can go outside and it's super dark and you can see the stars, especially if you can see falling stars. And of course, Milky Way season is one of my favorites. I absolutely love that. And Adria, I haven't shared this with you yet, but number two, I am so excited because I just ordered my wedding dress. (gasps) Oh, my word. I am so excited for you. Wow. I'm really excited. That's huge. I'm having it custom made and oh my gosh. Those of you that don't know, our listeners, we were supposed to get married last October and we put off the wedding because of the pandemic. And so I should have had a dress months and (laughs) months ago and I I never bought one and I finally did. And this kind of leads me into the third thing that I'm grateful for, but I am so grateful, number one, to to have my wedding dress ordered, to have something that's being custom made. But the third thing that I'm grateful for is Etsy because... 
anyone that knows me knows that I do not like to follow crowds. I love to have my own style, my own way of doing things. I have lots of personal items that are one of a kind and custom made. And so I wanted my wedding dress to kind of feel that same way. I definitely mm-hmm. don't want a white dress because I've been married before. And so it's taken me a year and a half plus to, to figure <laughs> out exactly what I wanted. But I found a seller on Etsy that makes custom wedding dresses. And I am so excited that they are making a dress for me. And I'm grateful that there are companies out there that provide that ability and Mm -hmm. the ability to really just express yourself. So I can't wait to see it. That's exciting. (laughs) Well, Adria, this week, I really want to talk about something that we haven't really gotten into. And that's acting on inspiration. And Some listeners could maybe think, well, what does that have to do with the law of attraction? Especially because up to this point, we've talked about how really when it comes to manifesting, you don't really need to do anything. And then when we've said, well, what do you have to do? We've said, well, what you really have to do is just feel good all the time. Just stay in a high vibration state and you'll attract everything that you want. So maybe we are setting this precedence that really you don't have to do anything at all. You just sit back and wait for your doorbell to ring and just be happy in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain piece of that that's true, but there are times when we do need to act in order to get things moving, to make connections. What the difference is, it is not up to us to try and force a situation or manipulate an outcome or try and get something to work out on our behalf that we would like to have happen. Really, we're supposed to just sit around and wait till we get this feeling of, oh, maybe I should call that person or maybe I should go there or maybe I should do this or fill out that form or respond to this. Adria, I have a whole bunch of examples I'm going to share with you and our listeners today. But just off the top of your head, can you, and you don't have to give an an example, but can you think of Mm -hmm. times in your life that you actually have felt inspired and acted on it? I have definitely had opportunities in my life to act on inspiration. Well, it's interesting because I know that you have done things for me that I assume you felt inspired to do. We talked about it on a prior episode where You just showed up at my doorstep with our sister, Tara, and provided Christmas for me and my family. And I don't know, maybe you had some inside information, but I hadn't shared with people what was going on. So I assume you felt inspired to do that. Um, I have quite a few different examples, and I want to talk about those, but I also want to talk about how they relate to the law of attraction, because sometimes acting on inspiration is about bringing about what you want simply by following a prompting that you receive. And other times it can be just by putting the good out into the world. So it could be acting on inspiration to be the answer to someone else's prayer, maybe even unknowingly. That's good that you're putting out into the universe that will be returned back to you in some way. So it could be that. that you're, thanks. It could be that you're actually fulfilling your own desires But it also could be that you are the person someone else is praying for and you're helping fulfill their desires, which in turn will send that good energy back to you. So first example that I have, I think you've heard this story, but our listeners haven't. And that's that when Dan, my fiance, and I moved to the Tahoe area back in 2019, we were moving out here and transitioning to tiny house living. And I've mentioned a few times on the podcast that I live in a tiny house and it is not traditional. It is a converted army truck with a tiny house built on the back. It is so small and it is so awesome and it is anything but normal. And so if you know anything about tiny houses or if you watch anything on YouTube or on social media, you've probably heard that just finding a place to park a tiny house can be a challenge because of zoning and restrictions. And most tiny houses are built on a non-traditional foundation. They are often built on trailers. And so they're not even considered a house in most places. So finding someplace that you can legally permanently park a tiny house 
is quite a challenge. And then you add the fact that ours is a truck. It's a military truck with a tiny house built on the back. And you would think, okay, well, a truck can go anywhere. True. But where do you park it long term? And so when we were moving here, just getting our tiny house was a whole story in and of itself, which I'm sure I'll share at some point on the podcast. But once we decided that we were transitioning to this house and our house is called Hank, that's the name of our house is Hank, handsome Hank. And moving into Hank, we knew this was the direction that we wanted to go. We knew we wanted to be in the Reno Tahoe area. And so we started looking for places to park and really we thought, okay, well, we want hookups. We want water. We want power. We want the ability to connect to internet and have some of those nice luxuries of everyday life. And so we really were thinking maybe that we would find an RV park and, you know, do some type of long-term stay that way. So we started looking into RV parks and we called every RV park in the area. And most of them instantly turned us down when they found out what our vehicle was. A couple were interested and said, send us more information. And when they found out the age of the truck, they said, well, our insurance companies won't cover insurance on something that old because our truck was built in the 90s or made in the 90s. And so we went from this exciting dream that we were fulfilling by by transitioning to tiny living to realizing, oh my gosh, we have nowhere to live and nowhere to park our truck. We can't just drive to Walmart parking lots every night and how will we survive? And so it became one of these things where we had to figure out, or it felt like we have to figure out where to park. And so Dan trying to control the how was all about calling everybody he knew and trying to figure things out. And it was very discouraging because every place he called, we were turned down. Everything we looked into, we finally were like thinking maybe we would have to move into a trailer park. So he reached out to trailer park houses and houses, not houses, trailer park parks. Parks. (laughs) Parks. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a park to park. And we found that most don't have any vacancy. Very few um, would accept a vehicle of our, our kind. Um, some of them were owned by manufacturer home builders. So the parks were only for their homes. And so we were running into the same sort of situation. Every time we thought we had an idea as we looked into it we realized this isn't coming together for us and so as time got closer that we were going to move and we did not have somewhere to park handsome hank i just kind of put it out there to the universe as to hey we need some help here and we need we need this answer we need a solution and i just kind of let it go to the universe like i talk about all the time dan was pretty stressed about it i was like ah it's going to work itself out. And that's usually how I am. And people laugh (laughs) at how easy and laid back I typically am about things these days. But one day the thought crossed my mind, you know what? You should place an ad on Craigslist. And I told Dan, I'm going to place an ad on Craigslist. See if someone has like some land or something that we could park our truck on. And Dan acted like I was kind of crazy (laughs) and that it's crazy people that you run into on Craigslist, right? That's kind of the the stigma that Craigslist has. And I thought, well, what does it hurt? And I remember a phrase um, from back in the early 2000s, going through sales training, you can't lose what you don't have. Meaning you might as well put yourself out there because the worst thing that can happen is somebody tells you no. If you don't have it already, you can't lose it. So why not just put it out there? Why not just throw it out there? So I made this ad on Craigslist. I showed some pictures of Hank. I showed some pictures of Dan and I I talked about how we're this sweet little couple and quiet. (laughs) I just wanted to transition to this, this simpler life and threw it out there to the universe. And I didn't really think much about it. About two or three days later, we actually had someone contact us and say, Hey, I've got an RV pad on my property. I think your truck seems like the perfect addition to my little you know, home. And I was kind of weirded out at first thinking, (laughs) this is too good to be true. I don't know if I dare call this guy. Dan was out of town. I made Dan reach out to him. Long story short, 
We have been here for over a year. It is the most amazing place we ever could have manifested. We've got all kinds of privacy. The truck is behind a fence. We've got our own space. He has a big yard that we're allowed to use. He has a hot tub that we use. In the summer, he puts up a a swimming pool and he's become a good friend of ours and we're in this cute quiet neighborhood and we have our own parking space and it's just been so so wonderful and just like so many of the other things I've manifested that I've mentioned on this podcast it was far better than what I ever could have dreamed of because when we talked about staying in an RV park or a mobile home park We wouldn't have had the amenities that we have here or the friendships. You know, we talked about how our neighbors were going to be 70 year old, 70 years old with like five cats. And instead, (laughs) we have a landlord who's around our age and has, you know, a lot of wonderful amenities for us to use. And it's less expensive than what we were looking at originally. And it was one of those things where if I hadn't followed that inspiration to post an ad on Craigslist, I don't know that it would have worked out the same way. In fact, I know it wouldn't have worked out the same way. So that's just one example of following inspiration for the universe to be able to bring me what I was asking for. If I hadn't put that on ad on Craigslist, our landlord, Matt, I don't know how he would have found us. I'm sure we would have found somewhere to park, but we wouldn't be where we're living today and as happy as we are today. So that's just one example that I have. That brings a question to mind, Kayla, and maybe you're going to address this, but how do you quiet that voice? Or maybe you don't have the voice in the first place that when you have a thought like that says, whoa, that's a crazy thought. And then you just move away from it. Because I can tell you that if I had the thought to post something like that on Craigslist, probably my second thought would be why all the reasons that's crazy. And then it would end there. I would be looking at other options. Well, that's a great question. And that's not to say that I always act on inspiration or that I always act on inspiration the first time that it happens. And a prime example of that is this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell you how many times I thought to myself, I should do a podcast before I decided I'm going to do a podcast. And it was exactly what you were saying. I had this voice in my head that kept convincing myself, you know what, that's silly. That's crazy. You're putting yourself out there. Nobody's going to want to listen to you. You know, there's all the negativity that just automatically comes in. We're conditioned for that. And yet the thought kept popping into my head, podcast, 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 to the point where one day I finally was like, uh, duh, I think I'm supposed to do this. (laughs) There's probably a reason that that idea keeps coming in my mind. And there are times when a situation will come and go. If you don't act on it, that might not come around again. But there are other times when it's not so urgent. And if you don't act, you will continue to get that reminder, that thought. And when you get that, and when you notice that you're getting it over and over again, that's really when you know it's inspiration and you should move forward. Um, There's there's times, you know, when you'll just think of a person, someone maybe you haven't thought of in years, and their, their name will pop into your head, or they'll show up in a dream, and then you start thinking about them. And suddenly you start thinking about them all the time. Well, that's probably inspiration that you should reach out to that person. And maybe it's because they have something to offer you. Maybe it's because you have something to offer them. Maybe it's that they really just need to know that somebody out there cares about them. Maybe they're going through a hard time. But those are some of those kind of examples where when you get that idea and it feels strange, but you get it over and over again, there's a reason that you're getting that and you should be acting on it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. I've got um, another example for you. Okay, let's hear it. Back in, I think it was 2005, if I remember, I was dating someone that was not Dan, and I was on my way to dinner to meet him, and I was pulling out of my um, apartment or, or condo complex out onto a major road, And as I was pulling out, I turned onto um, this road and I was actually driving down the road and I had the thought, oh my gosh, you're not wearing your seatbelt, which I never have that thought because I'm actually really good about wearing my seatbelt. But I had this thought about how I wasn't wearing my seatbelt, which made me think I should put on my seatbelt. So Mm -hmm. even though I was in the middle of driving, 
I did put my seatbelt on and within about maybe 20 seconds got to a light where I stopped at the light, sat there for a moment. Again, this was a pretty busy street. It was a four-way stop. <clears throat> and I hear this noise of screeching tires. I think it's the car to my right. I turn and I throw a dirty look at the person because I think they're <laughs> revving their engine, like squealing their wheels, trying to race me, you know? Yes. And next thing I know, I realize that screeching noise is coming from behind me. And I turn over my shoulder to see what it is. And right when I do that, I'm rear-ended. As you probably know, or anyone who's been in a car accident, time kind of stands still or moves in slow motion in those type of situations. So mm -hmm. I can vividly remember all of the details, which I won't go through for time's sake. But when the cops arrived, that car had hit me and left the scene. And because I was on a major intersection on a major road there were mm -hmm. a lot of witnesses it was still light outside a lot of people pulled over gave witness statements the cops got out measured the skid marks from where this car started to hit its brakes to where they actually impacted me and it was over 200 feet long Wow. They told me that they had never seen a car accident with skid marks in that length where the person that was hit had survived. Oh, my word. They said if you had not been wearing your seatbelt, you would have gone through the windshield. And wow. it really shook me up. It's, it's hard to go through a situation like that. But it really shook me up that I had had the thought literally seconds before I got to the light you're not wearing your seatbelt. You should put it on. And I acted on that and I didn't think anything of it at the moment, but it literally saved my life. And you could say, okay, so Kayla, what does this have to do with manifesting in the law of attraction? Well, this part of the story doesn't have anything to do with it, but it was a hit and run. There's a lot more information on this, um, which again, <laughs> I won't take the time to go into, <laughs> but it turned out that they did find the driver. They were uninsured. Um, because of my car expenses and my medical expenses, I ended up having to sue my own insurance company to get my bills paid for. And in the long run, years later, when I actually got my final settlement from my insurance company, I got a settlement check of either five or six grand. I can't remember what it was. It was above and beyond what it, I needed to cover my medical bills. But at that exact, I was going to say very, that very exact moment in time, I was going through something else in my life where I needed to hire an, an attorney and the retainer fee was $5,000. Wow. And when that settlement check came in was the exact perfect amount and exact perfect timing where I had everything that I needed to hire an attorney and pay for my retainer from this car accident that I had had years before. And so to me, that was something that I never would have wanted to have happen. I never would have wanted to go through that. I never would have wanted to manifest that. But in hindsight, it was something that I needed later in life. I needed that money and that all came together for me. And not only did it save my life from putting on my seatbelt, but it also provided the income for the retainer for this attorney at the time when I really needed that as well. So that's another example of how acting on inspiration became an answer to my prayer. And I, I, again, I don't know if you have your own examples. I don't want to put you on the spot. If you think of anything, feel free to jump in here. But those are some big ones. I can think of some more like less dramatic, fun ones that I can think of. Um, some of the listeners might know this if you know me personally, but most of you probably do not know that... For the last many years, because my fiance, Dan, is a professional photographer and he specializes in product photography, he and I have worked as brand ambassadors or um, product photographers for a lot of brands and some big companies. And so, again, acting on inspiration, we've had a lot of connections and um, opportunities that have come our way. And one that comes to mind is one of the first paid brand ambassadorships that we ever had. 
And that was from a company called Jackery. And if you're not familiar with Jackery, they make portable power banks. So everything from power banks for your phone up to generators for your RV or just around your house, basically power that you can take anywhere. And they make these power banks in a number of different sizes. Well, they just came out a few years ago. And when they came out, they launched with a giveaway. And it was one of those online social media giveaways. And we've probably all seen those. We've probably all entered in those. And it's to the point where I just go, oh, I'm not entering any more of those because I'm just offering my information up to someone. And there's going to be one winner of these, you know, 30,000 people that entered. But with Jackery, when they did their giveaway, I think they had 600 winners because they had different prizes that they were giving away. They had two or three grand prizes, and then there were varying prizes going on down from there. And I thought, 600 winners, the chances are pretty decent. That's not a company that people really know. And so I had the inspiration to enter this drawing. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. I don't know. And then after I entered, I even told Dan, I was like, I have a feeling I'm going to win something. And he was like, oh, really? You're going to win this Instagram <laughs> giveaway? Good for you. You know, <laughs> I'd really make Dan sound like a bad guy on this podcast. And I don't mean to do that. He's actually really loving and really supportive. He's just the guy I get to throw under the bus. But no, he did kind of tease me about the fact that I thought I was going to win this giveaway. And it turned out that I did win. I was one of the grand prize winners. And I did win a free power bank, which I then wrote a review for and so forth. And it turned into me becoming their very first brand ambassador. And we got all kinds of free product. And they paid for us to travel to do product photography and reviews for them. And they also paid us on top of the paid travel. And it only lasted for a quarter because they choose a different brand ambassador every quarter of the year. But it was so fun and it was so exciting and it wasn't anything that I was desperate about or really <laughs> needed, but it was just another one of those times where, I, you know, the little voice in my head said, you should enter this. And I thought, you know, what do I, what do I stand to lose? You know, I might give up yes. some free information, but I, it worked out for me and it ended up being a really fun adventure for us. And so that's oh, just that. another, another example of of how we acted on inspiration or I acted on inspiration. You reminded me of a similar experience that I had um, just drive. It was one year when my husband was in, unemployed. It was the holidays and Christmas was going to be really lean. I wasn't sure what we were going to do for the kids driving down the street. I saw a gas station that had a marquee that said like, come inside to win a free Wii. And I thought, I think I could win that. I went in, I gave them my name and my phone number. And like a week later, they called and it was, we was a pretty new thing. So it was a major gift for my kids. And you know, a very memorable Christmas. That I can't so believe I funny. forgot that because it, it was it was just like, I had the thought, and I knew it was going to happen. And it did. It was incredible. That is incredible. And I'm shocked that you've never told me that. But how awesome. <laughs> I love that. Where I live now, I actually see that gas station pretty often. And I think about it every time I drive past there because it was a real blessing that year. I think that's so great. And I hope that these stories aren't just feel good stories for listeners, but I hope that as we share our experiences, it helps stir up thoughts and memories of things that other people can think of, times that they've acted on things and it's worked out to their benefit. And, you know, Sometimes we don't act on things and in hindsight, we can think, oh, I should have done that. I was going to do that. I thought about that. Yes. Um, I can't think of anything right off of the top of my head, but I joke about business ideas and things where, you know, I'll come up with this. Oh, I should invent that or we need that. And then one day then somebody comes. Yes. Does. Somebody yes. else invents it. And every time you go, oh, man, that was my idea. That was such a good idea. I should have done something with that. That's right. I'm sure we can all relate to that. But there are those moments when we really don't act on something. Here's a, an example. Um, since we've been to the Tahoe area, we have not 
well, it's been a pandemic, so that's part of it, but we have not been out to photograph like we used to. We used to go out almost every weekend and we'd go places in the Jeep and we'd explore and we would just get out and take pictures. And since we've been here, we haven't really done that so much. And we definitely haven't taken pictures around the lake like I thought we would. Mm -hmm. And so Dan does talk about that quite frequently. And he's been talking about how he wants to capture an amazing sunset over the lake. And while we were house sitting, which we're not anymore, we're back home in Hank. But while we were (laughs) house sitting, there was one night on a weekend when we had just kind of been sitting around, we'd been lazy all day. And he said to me, you know, maybe we should go up to the lake and and take a picture today. Maybe, maybe we, it looks like it might be a nice sunset. Maybe we should go. And both of us just kind of him and hawed around it and decided that was too much effort and we didn't go. And it was the most phenomenal sunset probably of the whole year. <laughs> it was incredible. And all we did was sit at home and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe we didn't go. We could have gone. We didn't have anything going on. We could have gone. We could have got these epic photos. And then, of course, everyone else is putting posting their epic photos on social media. And oh my gosh, did you see the sunset? Did you see the sunset? And we saw it, but we didn't see it over the lake. And we definitely didn't get any photos of it. And it was one of those times when it was just a small thing. It didn't really matter, but it was one of those times when that little voice inside you is like, Hey, go do this. Nudges you to get up. And you just said, no, Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable. I don't want to get ready. I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to deal with traffic. And that was a missed opportunity. And so those, those moments happen too. And hopefully when those moments happen, we're not missing out on something big. And truthfully, the way the law of attraction works is if you miss your opportunity, it's not a one and done. It doesn't mean there won't be another opportunity. But we do talk about how some things take longer to manifest than others. And so if you miss that opportunity, it could be a while before the next one comes around. And so if you can just get yourself to act, to get up out of your chair, to make that phone call, to fill out that form to go take that photo to connect with someone. Once again, don't be fearful. Don't worry about how it will turn out. Know that you can't lose what you don't have and act on it because you may be pleasantly surprised. You know, I saw a quote the other day and I cannot remember now who said it, but what you said reminds me. And the the quote is everything you want is on the other side of fear. Absolutely. So, you're right. If we, if we don't give in to that um, hesitancy, maybe. Yep. Then we're that much closer to what we want. Absolutely. So we briefly touched on it earlier in the conversation, but now I want to kind of shift to talking about being the answer to someone's prayer. And maybe it's not even just being an answer to someone's prayer. Maybe it's just random acts of kindness because there are times when you will feel inspired to do things for others. I can tell you that it's been a while since I've been to Starbucks, but when we were living in Sedona, there were three times in about a six month period when I would go through the drive-thru and the car in front of me would pay for my drink. I love that. And it doesn't mean that I needed it. Um, Maybe I did. I don't, I probably wasn't in line at Starbucks if I needed someone to pay for my drink. (laughs) But it feels amazing to have people go out of their way for you in that sense. I've been at the grocery store where the person in line for me is a couple of dollars short or trying to dig out change from their purse or trying to figure out, you know, maybe their card declines and they're trying to figure out another form of payment. And they're, I may not be able to afford to pay for their groceries, but I'll tell you what, if I could just hand pass them a $5 bill to help cover the change or to help make up the difference or help somebody out. That's definitely something where I have probably felt inspired in the past. I've probably done things like that, but those are opportunities that we have to really just be the answer to someone's prayer and to step up and put something out into the universe that's positive that can be returned back to us. And like Mm -hmm. I've said already, there have been times when other people have answered my prayers. I've had countless times where I've received money in the mail. Um, I had one time when I blew a tire in the middle of the night and was stranded on the side of the street where there were no streetlights. And 
the guy I was dating at the time was in another state and I needed someone to help me change my tire. Mm -hmm. And I probably sound like a girl that can't change her own tire. I can, but I could not get the lug. street light. <laughs> I needed a street light and <laughs> the lug nuts were so tight. I wasn't strong enough to get them off myself. And so there's those times when it's, you know, someone somewhere is asking for someone to answer their prayer. And there are so many times when we have those opportunities and, you know, it could be that your phone rings and normally you don't answer an unknown call and maybe you just get a feeling I'm supposed to answer it this time. Maybe it's that someone asks you to call them or do something and you think, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night. I don't want to be bothered. I'm just going to act like I didn't see the text. You know, there's just whatever. There's so many times when we have a choice as to whether or not to act or whether or not we don't act. And it's not to say that the whole world or universe is going to fall apart if we don't. But think of all the good things that could happen if we do. And I think it's important to remember that we're out there praying for, for solutions and answers. And I say praying, maybe not praying, and maybe we're not desperate. But we're asking the universe, hey, bring us the things I'm asking for. And in most cases, it requires someone stepping in and assisting, whether it's someone connecting to be that next new relationship or someone responding to your resume when you apply for a job or someone selecting you and your offer in a multiple offer situation on a house. I mean, it, there's so many things that require another person to say yes to you for something. Imagine if you just found ways to say yes more often and put that out into the universe to be the positive, happy energy for someone else's answer, not expecting anything in return, but knowing that that's how the universe works and the universe will pay you back tenfold. The universe will make it happen for you. And the more that you are that type of a person and just act on inspiration and fulfill other people's needs, the more that you're going to receive in return. Adria, do you have any comments or thoughts on this topic before we kind of turn into our action item this evening? Well, I just, I love this topic for so many reasons because I feel like it's empowering and I feel like it's putting positivity, positivity out into the world, which in turn um, makes me feel more positive and attract more good. So just for so many, I feel like there's so many reasons that this is a positive thing to do. I'm glad we're talking about it. <laughs> I'm glad we're talking about it too. When I was thinking about what we were going to talk about this week, I came up with the thought. And then the more that I really sat down and tried to come up in my mind of times that I've acted on inspiration that has worked out to my benefit, it felt really good to reflect back on that. It was, it was kind of like thinking about my gratitude, just acknowledging times when things really have worked out for me or where my inner voice or my intuition or the universe or whatever you want to acknowledge it as being just came through and stepped up and, and think the stars aligned, you know, I think it's, it's amazing and incredible and how wonderful to think that we can be a part of that for somebody else besides ourselves. I think yeah. that's so great. Okay. So this leads us into our action item, unless you had any. You no, like no, I'm ready for the action <laughs> item. I'm excited. Actually, I have two action items and one's really small. That's why I picked two. The two action items this week, number one are, I want to encourage our listeners to find some way to do a random act of kindness for someone else. It could be that you see someone struggling to put their groceries in the trunk of their car and you could stop and you could help them. It could be pulling out that $5 bill for the person in front of you in line, like we said. It could be answering that text or that phone call that you don't really want to in the middle of the night because maybe that person on the other end really needs somebody right then. Look for a way to do a random act of kindness for someone else. That's action item number one. Okay. And then action item number two, this is the easy one is 
I really felt inspired to do this podcast. And I think I've said that a few times. I acted on inspiration when I decided, you know what? I'm going to step up. I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how to do a podcast. I don't know who's (laughs) going to listen. But I really felt like someone somewhere out there needs to hear what I have to say. And I took that leap of faith and I acted on inspiration. And so this action item is for each of our listeners to tell someone about this podcast. And the reason is that if you're listening, you probably love it. You're probably enjoying it. But there's somebody out there who needs to hear this. In fact, there's probably more than one somebody out there that needs to hear this. And I'm not just talking about this episode. I'm talking about the podcast in general. Somebody needs to hear this and you can be the answer to their prayer by telling them about this podcast, because I'm telling you, I don't know who needs to hear it. I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe I'm crazy, but somebody out there is praying for this podcast. And so I'm asking you, our listeners, to tell somebody else. Just wait till you feel inspired. You don't have to tell someone today or you can turn around and you can tell everybody. I don't care. (laughs) But that's action item number two. Tell someone about the podcast, especially someone that you think could really use this information and could benefit from hearing ways that they can improve their life and start living their happily ever after. Adrian, do you... I just want to say that's really the reason that we're doing this, right? The reason we're doing it is not... um, for self-promotion, but really, I think, to at least my reason for doing it, and I, as I understand it, your reason for doing it is to get this message to people that will benefit from it and need it right now in their life to bless their lives. Absolutely. That's entirely why we're here. We're, we're here because we feel inspired. We felt called and, and we're putting ourselves out there. And so we're asking you to put yourself out there and help us spread the message. So that leads us into our giveaway, and I meant to mention it at the beginning of the podcast, but we do have a winner from this past week. We've Yay. had several new reviews come in. We're so excited and so grateful for that. But our winner this week is Proud Mama 85. Proud Mama 85 left us a glowing review on iTunes. I just was so touched. I love her word for the year, but proud mama 85, send us an email at hello at attractitwithease.com. We know your word for the year, but we need your address to send you your bracelet. (laughs) (laughs) So send us an email and we'll get that sent out to you. Um, I did get in touch with Tab March. I said her name wrong on the last episode, but she was last week's winner and her word for the year is practice. I thought that oh, was a really I like good one. That. I really yeah. like that too. I we love sure hearing. enjoy hearing. Is that what you were going to say? We sure yes. enjoy hearing people's words. I yes. love it. Yes. So I'm still updating the website, but as we make the bracelets, we'll take pictures. We'll post them on the website so that you can see what the bracelets look like. You can have ideas for the theme word, but Adria, do you want to remind our listeners about what the giveaway actually is? Yes. So each week we're going to draw the name from people who have re- who have submitted a review of our podcast, which we really appreciate. If you'll review it, give us your feedback. We're always looking to get better and improve. And so each week we will draw the name of one person who submitted a review and that person will receive a custom bracelet with their theme word of the year. Yes. So we've had two winners so far. We're two weeks down. If you leave us a review on any platform, you'll be entered in, but we do need to know your name. So a star rating doesn't count. You have to write a review. If you'll just leave us a review, no matter what you rate us, one, two, three, four, or five stars, you'll be entered into the drawing. But we appreciate you listening. It's been fun talking with you this week, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Adria, have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.